Make that big boss less special It ain't no game, but they say I'm Welcome to the second level What's up, world, and welcome back to Codename Morpheus, episode 19. And my name is Tom, and sat next to me is my buddy Keegan, who you will be familiar with if you've been paying any kind of attention since we started this channel. Uh, but I'm still going to say his name, Keegan. See, I said his real name, not like some food that I'm basing him around. Bangers and mash. I say your real name when I introduce you. Are you mac and cheese or something? No, that's Dave. That's Dave. Yeah, we're going to find something else. Uh, so, welcome back. Uh, thank you so much for all the support lately. We've really, really felt it, uh, especially with the Skyrim review. That uh, was nuts, and uh, we really appreciate it, all the love uh, for that. A uh, quick bit of housekeeping, um, because this is... The second time we've said this now, but we want to make sure that everyone's aware, next week will be different. Um, we are going to be doing a 24-hour live stream from Tuesday uh, 1 p.m. through till Wednesday 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. And uh, we are going to try to record the show semi-normally, but also live at the same time. So we're going to be doing our indie podcast, our virtual podcast, and our regular podcast back-to-back-to-back, 100% live. 100% you can join us. Which is might be why it's going to look and sound a little bit different. Yeah, we won't be, be we won't have the pretty studio. Uh, we're going to be literally on my couch because that's where we're going to be for 24 hours. So, um, that's where you're going to be for 24 that's hours. That's where I'm going to be for 24 hours. So, yeah, so that's a, a really fun 24-hour live stream coming up next week on Tuesday. So if you want to watch you, it live. Yeah, if you want to watch live and you can talk to us, probably, we'll have the chat up and everything. Probably about, I would say probably about 2, 2.30 is when we'll go live yeah, with Cindy or with uh, Codename. CST. And, uh, and yeah, just kind of, I mean, we'll probably, we'll probably tweet it out when we start a different show. If we, we remember. That. Yeah. So that's the half the battle is remembering. Level two gamers STL and we'll tweet it out. And if you're in the vicinity, you can join us live and that'll be funsies. Uh, it's breaking so, news. That being said, right. <laughs> uh, that this being said, it's new game time. And this week is rough. Uh, so rough. In fact, that there is your dog. Any, new games really there's one experience uh that is free and that is the andres iniesta uh the illusionist uh which is basically a trailer for a documentary at least i don't think it's the full documentary because it would suck if it did or if it was um this has been available for uh users on other platforms for some time now the hong kong store had it i think the japan store had it so it's already been played in its entirety and it's up on our channel if you want to check it out um but it's finally hit the north american shores so uh you have andres and yes does uh the illusionist what do you know what do you say have you have you watched it yet no no. All I know is who Andre Iniesta is. And he, who is he? He kicks the round ball into the goal. <laughs> he kicks the round ball around. That's right. Yes. Uh, yeah, he's a, I think he's he's a Spanish? soccer player, uh, but I don't know where he's from. I think he's Spanish. Um, but it's basically just like a weird experience thing, much the same as all those ones in the UK store, if you've ever had a chance to check those out, like uh, the David Attenborough one and the Ghosts of fleet ship or whatever the hell like those ones it's like that um but it's it's kind of cool i mean it's not terrible it's free so there's that uh it's definitely a, a neat uh idea it's just kind of a really quick experience so there's that and that's it that's it for uh for new releases but of course you know next week is uh there's some big ones hitting the shelves the PSX got... is coming up so i'm sure it's gonna be bananas yeah we got doom as well next week of course so uh there'll be a lot to talk about that week um in fact we probably be able to go live with that same day that we're doing the live stream so that'll be fun. probably um and then the sales the sales this week are actually quite good uh there's we were kind of worried that they were going to let us down on sales too but it turns out that they have some decent ones in there uh so starting out with arizona sunshine uh uh, Arizona Sunshine has a steep discount. It is now $28 down from the original $40. Uh, they also released the DLC today, which is part of our news package, so stay tuned for that. But uh, Arizona Sunshine still getting weird mixed reviews, right? It's like... I picked it up when it was on a, on that crazy PSVR sale that they did because a lot of people had said they had a really good time with it. Other people still say it sucks. So I'm kind of completely torn as to how to feel about it until I play it. It anyway. really good sucks. Yeah. It really sucks good. Sucks real good. Sucks real good. Um, but, <laughs> but I will uh, I will endeavor to actually play that maybe during the stream because it's an AIM game so it might be fun uh, and, and see what we make of that. But yeah, that's uh, $28 now. So if you were looking for a, a discount, you got one. Uh, Don't Knock Twice is a horror experience. Also played and up on the channel, full gameplay. And uh, Don't Knock Twice is based uh, around the movie of the same name. It's a horror experience. 
It's you walking around uh, knocking on doors. a haunted mansion with a candlestick and weird things happening. Knock three times if you're going to knock. <clears throat> it wasn't terrible. It really wasn't that bad. Um, it just wasn't much, you know? <laughs> Level two gamers. It wasn't terrible. I don't know what just happened. Like, I that was, there was some, that's definitely, that's definitely uh, like a, 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 a glowing review. <laughs> that's a glowing review. It was like... It wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible. Like, it, it wasn't... Tom, Level two gamers. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Put it on the box. But, um, <laughs> you know what I mean, though? Like, it's not Paranormal Activity good. It's not Resident Evil good. But it's not, like, Bargain Basement Don't Touch It good. It's it's not a bad time it's, at all. It exists. It exists. <laughs> and it exists at $13 down. It exists. Keep it two gamers. Put that so, on the box. <laughs> so if... Uh, <laughs> you got your silly chops on today. So 13 bucks. if you think that's a reasonable uh, price for a existing <laughs> all right game, it then wasn't, there you go. It wasn't terrible and it exists. The answer 20 bucks. Uh, and then Digital Domains Monkey King is also down. Now, this is more of an experience, I believe, this than an actual dumb. game. I'm not going to lie. Uh, it looks like a weird Pixar thing with a Monkey King. Because uh, you know how much I love monkeys and how much I love kings and how much I love monkey I'm surprised monkey you kings. haven't looked at it. It's I have. It, right it, now. Every, everything I've read about it just says don't. Yeah, well, it's four bucks. So, you know? It's still a don't. Still a don't. I could, bucks, I could put that four bucks towards, I don't know, Arizona Sunshine and then save 24 don't bucks. Twice. No. Because it exists. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> Monkey King is $4 down from 10 Or maybe this uh, next one. If you're interested at it, then take a look. We haven't played it, so we can't comment. If, if anyone's played it in the comments, you know what to do. Uh, DreamWorks Voltron VR Chronicles. That's a much more anticipated uh, game, and that one kind of came out of nowhere. And that is now $6 down from 15 So, that's an even better discount uh six bucks for voltron what do we think worth it i'm not a voltron fan so i'm probably gonna avoid it but right. i know people who like voltron and people i've talked to in different gaming groups that love voltron they're like uh yeah that's like go the ghostbusters things when that came out david's like i'm gonna buy it because it's ghostbusters yeah i still haven't played that yet. i bought it but i yeah, no, we couldn't record it couldn't record it because hdcp mad. i'm mad at it behind the scenes hdcp uh so yeah so dreamworks voltron vr chronicles six down for 15 so you got hours of the sunshine don't knock twice digital domains monkey king and dreamworks voltron vr chronicles lots of really long named games today you, um, do you notice that your name's got longer as you went down you i started didn't. two That's words three accident. words four words and then five more no, syllables four words. right yeah your syllables uh, got longer so uh news this week has been a little slow i gotta be honest i think um we overdosed ourselves on news uh during the skyrim period and there was a lot of crazy shit going on and well let's be on, let's the... be honest though skyrim is the biggest thing to happen psvr Since and PSVR, i yeah. think before we get into your news, can we talk real quick about something I've observed? Go ahead. Because, again, I'm known as Negative Nancy on this show sometimes. So you're going to be a miserable fucker right now? Uh-uh. Okay. I was going to say, one of the things I've observed is I've always I've always been one of those people, like, I'm not a, I don't say I'm not a gamer because I fucking run a gaming show, but, right. like, I'm not your traditional gamer in that, like, Skyrim looks cool, it sounds cool, I'm not as excited about that as I am. I don't know, Rec Room VR, that's a lot of fun. Um, but... I've seen the power of Skyrim <laughs> in multiple groups I've been a part of. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple in particular where like people like I bought either they bought a PSVR on Black Friday and then bought Skyrim or they bought the Skyrim bundle when it came out. Which They're sold out now. I don't know if that makes sense to do that if it was cheap. I don't know if I don't know if it was cheaper to buy the PSVR and then the game or if it would have been cheaper. I don't know. I, I, I'm not here to the tell them how to spend their money. Right, right. It's a it's a pretty box. Yeah. Uh it's a collector's item, one that's might how, say. That's how I stole mine. In the box? In the box. Yeah. Oh, I don't. I, don't. I, I have a stand. I need a case or something. I have I a stand to put mine in. In the box. Or put mine on. Perfectly. But no, I've, 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 I've seen the power of Skyrim. Perfectly good box, Tom. <laughs> put it on the box. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've seen the power of Skyrim. Like, the, the amount of units that have been sold, and I'm sure there's a bit of news that's going to talk about kind of Black Friday and all that, but the amount of units that have been sold between Skyrim's launch and Black Friday is noticeable tick up. And I'm not talking about, because you hang out in PS r slash psvr those people already love it i'm talking about like areas Standard where folk. people people well gamers but not people who are necessarily always talking about psvr they like the big one i'm in is kind of funny they talk about ps4 stuff but the vr conversation there's been more and more of like hey i picked this up what should i get hey i got this what should i get hey 
what do you guys think of this? What do you guys think of that? And I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. So I've seen more and more of those posts coming out of yeah. the woodworks, and it's kind of cool. Do you know what's interesting is um, when they when PlayStation posted on Facebook about Skyrim VR, like when it came out. And I've seen commercials. You, you would read the uh, comments, and everyone's like, oh, this, what a fucking joke. Bethesda's trying to you know make more money. Um, PSVR is stupid. Just give us another Call of Duty or whatever. There's still I those. I feel like it's a bunch of bros. There's still but, those. But there's a lot of people that seem just adamantly against it because of either Sony's track record with peripherals or um, just some other weird thing in their in their mind maybe because uh, they don't have one I don't know what it is but it's it's some weird thing uh, that, that crops up but the only thing that ever counteracts it is the thing that we talk about all the time is that Putting it on. when they get it on when they put that headset on they shut the fuck up instantly yep. like every one of them is like okay I've been wrong forever and Skyrim is the perfect game to showcase the power of that feeling and emotion especially for gamers that played the original yes. skyrim because they realize for the first time oh this is actually a different experience this isn't like just them rehashing it this is actually really mind-blowingly weird you know you know what's perfect is this week skyrim or last week technically last week two weeks ago whatever it's been it's been a, only been a week it's only been a week only been a week skyrim and then rec room like those are two Same completely day. different yeah. experiences both amazing but I've seen people that have like, hey, I bought it for Skyrim. What else should I get? And then there's been people like, I picked up Rec Room. Like, add me on PSN. Yeah. Because I've had someone. This one guy, he's he told a story of how he was playing with some French guy that he didn't know, and they were playing ping pong, and they just had a blast. Yeah. Like, it's really cool because, as you as you know, I'm I. I want VR to be successful. I also am not going to be a super fanboy and super. You're not roast. I'm not. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Like a, I'm not a. I'm not a. I'm a cheerleader for it in the sense that it needs to be good to be successful. I don't want it to be successful without it being good. Right. That, if that makes you sense. You want it to be successful the right way. Yes. And uh, that's that. This to me is kind of. I mean, you had Resident Evil Seven, and I. I can't talk about that because I didn't play that game. I'll never play that game because it's scary. But this week with Skyrim, as much as Skyrim, I'm kind of still uneasy on because... I think it was just because of the motion sickness. That well, that it's sick. also scary. Like, oh. dragons and shit are scary. I'm a big wimp. You know this. But, like, Rec Room VR, the moment we had on that live stream, and that when we were done, we were all, like, David was talking to Brian. Like, I feel like there hasn't been that moment where everybody's just been like, holy shit, that was awesome in a long time. Do you remember uh, a week or two ago when I... I think it was last week when we talked about it and I said Rec Room is probably the best social experience on PSVR and you said, uh-uh, Werewolves is. Yeah. Do you feel like Rec Room no. is? No, yeah. <laughs> Rec Room is the best. <laughs> Rec Room is hands down the Wii Sports of the PSVR. Yes. Uh, except and it'll be online. it's going to be really cool because that's only it's still in beta. Oh, yeah. So imagine them, like, they could add they DLC down the road They put a lot of work into the that, game. Like, we have to thank Sean at Against Gravity. They put a lot of work into that game. And uh, it shows. Like, even, like, I contacted him after our stream because he, well, like, he contacted us and was like, hey, how'd it go? And uh, and I told him, you know, well, there was this thing where I glitched into a staircase for no reason. There was, there was a few I bugs here and there. I a couple there. of the bugs with him. And he's like, oh, can you timestamp them and show them to me? And unfortunately, it was your stream. So, so you can't that, see you Well, there, there was one section where, like, you're inside that. <laughs> You're like I'm inside the staircase. I was like, what? yeah, it's uh, so so yeah. You know, we we really want that game to succeed. It's done so much for the casual PSVR gamer or the PSVR gamer that doesn't the social. like horror. The social PSVR yeah. game, like that's what, I'm a social gamer. If you think of the other than Assassin's Creed right now, Destiny, Elder Scrolls, Overwatch are probably are my three big ones, and that's always been the case. Division was a big game for me. Yeah, for Honor, like I always play with friends and. PSVR is great to have those individual experiences, but I've I still stand behind um, uh, Star Trek and Werewolves being some of the best experiences. Oh, for, yeah. for me personally, I'm not knocking them down. I'm just saying that Rec Room. No, Rec Room blows it away. No, Rec Room Rec Room blows it away for multiple reasons. One, uh, people aren't assholes yet. I'm right. sure when it gets to the point of like there's the, if it they comes can't to toxic really be assholes, you know what I mean? No, because if yeah. you're playing with your group of friends or if you're in a public area, there's nothing they can do to you. Yeah, like so there's no like physical like annoyance they can really give you that you can't just travel to a different. The place. only thing I think of is if they don't do something, <clears> like they just stand there. Yeah, like is there a timeout or something like when it comes? Well, I guess there's a time around every every event. But yeah, it's um. It's it's pretty much like a weird cross between PlayStation Home and Wii Sports. It's a lot of fun. So I just wanted to say I've seen the I've I've seen the a the power of Skyrim, the power of VR this last week, and with Rec Room on top of it, like I've had probably my favorite experience in VR hands down so far. You um, been back in yet? No, I'm going to though. Yeah. Um, I I know I, I know I won't hop back in. I've 
again, Assassin's Creed, I want to finish that. St- I want to get Assassin's Creed done so I have time to play other shit. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, before we jump to the news, I want to just say how crazy this week has been for VR in general. Just as somebody who does not hang out in r slash PSVR or where people are super fanboyish and super excited about it, I'm more in the in-between audience that are like, I'm gamers. We're gamers. It looks interesting, but I'm not sure. Those people now, I think, have gotten on board, or I don't say all of them, but a lot of them have gotten on board like, okay, I now understand. Right. I picked it up because it was on sale on Black Friday, whatever it may be. I'm trying it. So, yeah. that being said, let's let's jump in the news. That's good news, and this is the news. So, the news this week starts off with a pretty exciting thing. There's a lot of these happening, but this one is a good one. I'm sure you'll like it. Uh, Bravo Team and AIM Bundle Controller to be released. So, much like the original Farpoint. With, this is, uh, the, this is like AIM. I said, this is the game I'm excited about when yeah. it comes to more quote-unquote realistic gaming things not the stupid social games this is the one that's got me the most excited i think i'm still more excited for alvo but i'm like with alvo i'm like there's so many things that could go wrong yeah it's yeah hard to be well this one have we seen gameplay yet of of uh no of bravo team uh i don't know if they i know they've done a trailer but i don't think it was game i think it was i think it was in it i think it was in an engine but it wasn't actually gameplay But this, so here this you go. Yeah, the PlayStation Aim controller is slowly growing a list of compatible titles, which is always nice. Having launched with Farpoint earlier this year, the likes of Arizona Sunshine, Raw Data, The Brookhaven Experiment, and Dick Wild uh, also added support for the accessory. The forthcoming Bravo team from Supermassive Games will not only be compatible, but will also launch as part of a bundle package with the device. The PlayStation Aim controller has been highly sought after accessory since launch, frequently selling out at retail stores across North America and Europe. Farpoint is available to. Purchase both at retail and digitally via the PlayStation Store without the PlayStation AIM controller. However, the general consensus of the virtual reality community is that it offers a far superior experience with the device. The fact that Bravo Team would be compatible with PlayStation AIM has already been confirmed. However, the retail bundle deal has been revealed via retailer communication. Bravo Team recently suffered a delay into next year, but upon launch will be available in a package with the PlayStation AIM controller, as you can uh, see in the image on the page, or in our instance behind us. Um, So... Cool. No, no official price yet for it. No, um, no official price. I imagine it's going to be similar to uh, yeah, Farpoint. Yeah, they're, se- they're, they're probably 70, 80 bucks for yeah. it, whatever it was. Yeah, I mean, honestly, when I picked up Farpoint uh, on Amazon for the bundle, it was. It was the pre order. They don't do $60. that anymore. They don't yeah. do that anymore, though. Well, sadly. here's Maybe hoping. I don't need the aim, though, so no. we got it. So. But yeah, I, I don't have the aim, and I just. I'm going to pick up Bravo Team. And I'm either gonna steal your aim controller, or I'm gonna pick my own my own out. That's fair. Because I want that's <clears throat> after playing Farpoint with as much as I didn't like the spider jumping, it's like playing with the aim controller right now Very good. is the best experience when it comes to fully immerse immersing yourself into VR. Yeah. Because it is it is designed with VR in mind. Yeah. Versus like the moves, which are kind of tacked on, and then the dual shock. I mean, it's just it's immersive. It, it's but... kind of what we were looking. It, it's a weird version of Move 2.0 in a single controller because yes. you have all the elements of being able to control your movement. You have both analog sticks. You have all the regular buttons, but then you have the the move bulb as well, which is excellent tracking with the singular guns on those games. So it's kind of like as far as like what we want move twos to be the aim is it we just want them in each hand to separate somehow it. um but yeah that's uh that's kind of the the big thing behind that guy and i love the aim to death i think it's a really great accessory i can't wait until get i mean it's slowly getting more. more and more games but i can't wait to the moment like i'm waiting for the day that they're gonna have a sale that is aim compatible games yeah because you know that's coming because if this thing is probably their best selling accessory yeah it's probably I would take a guess that's probably have has a anywhere between a twenty to twenty five percent attach rate to people who own PSVR. I mean, outside of anyone, I have a good pair of headset. Uh, I would say it's, it's definitely the, the it's number the one, one most requested well, peripheral. I would say, yeah, I would and say, a, and a moves. Nikon camera lens cleaner. That's another one. Yeah, uh, we'll get into that later. Actually, that's part of our question. So uh, another bit of news for you: Seeking Dawn, which is one that I have been following for a very long time. Uh, the channel's been keeping up on it. Uh, it's been, you know, one foot in, one foot out of PSVR for a while. Well, we have official confirmation that Seeking Dawn is absolutely fully confirmed for PSVR. Here is the uh, stuff here: uh, Multiverse Entertainment. To seeking Dawn. Oh, geez. Can you read that? My thing just went away. Okay. Uh-huh. 
Sorry, here we go. Oh. Multiverse Entertainment is seeking Dawn official community. 45 minutes. We have some good news on this day of thanks, which was Thanksgiving, obviously. We can finally safely say that PSVR is confirmed. With that said, keep in mind that it will not be released at the same time as the PC version for Rift and Vive, but we will be doing our best to get them to release around the same time. We also have a release period in mind that we don't intend on changing. We will share more details on release date and beta testing within the next few weeks. Release date will be in 2018. I uh, hope that everyone has a fun and safe Thanksgiving holiday weekend so yeah confirmation by the guys uh that they will in fact be releasing seeking dawn which has me really excited because this is like the one game outside of alvo that i'm just kind of like this could be something special like it mm -hmm. has elements of solace project mixed with um with farpoint in a really intricate intricate graphical beautiful environment so we have way different game types we play in vr i've realized it's true <laughs> well i play you know i play all kinds of stuff but i think yeah. that VR... no I, I mean this and I understand, as somebody who doesn't necessarily play the traditional games, that they're definitely necessary. Like I said, the power of Skyrim. Like, yeah. I saw the power of Skyrim. I could see the power, power of Skyrim the power of you. Farpoint. Like, you could see these games, and it's what I'm saying. Like, that's why I'm excited for Bravo Team, because Supermassive has been shown to make good games. Bravo Team, if it's a good game, I'm excited, because that means, okay, that dev's going to stick with it. Yeah. Um, well, Supermassive are already pretty much two feet in. They've said... Uh... The that's, VR is that's, their future. That's so. what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I want more and more debt. And again, I always the business hat guy of like, are they making money? Because if they don't make money, they're gonna pull out. It they doesn't matter be. what they say. Either that or Sony's making to make money. I yeah, don't know how that's it's that's the other thing is how many subsidies are going on. But they have a lot of games coming out too. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I uh, I like that the the games like this are happening because they're what I've said PSVR has needed for a long time where mm -hmm. it comes to full fledged games that are good experiences that graphically take advantage and that are hopefully unique. Yeah. Well, Seeking Dawn has elements of base building and things like that in there, so I know that you'd enjoy that part at least, but um, it does look to be great. If you've seen any of the video footage of it before the, or the trailers or whatnot, then then uh, you guys all know that it looks really intense. So really excited for that to get an official announcement for PSVR. Uh, next bit of news, I thought, uh, I mean, you're not in this focus group, <laughs> but um, I thought it would be fun to share. Uh, so Capcom have got the statistics, basically, for like how many people have played their game in how many different ways and they've recently uh, reported that over 300,000 um, PlayStation 4 owners have experienced the video game through its VR mode at home so that equates to 11.54% of all players um, and, the, and the cool thing about it is I think this was the first game to really like increase the amount of time that people played in headset so it incre increased the play time by approximately 100% over what it was previous to that existing um, which they is cool. doubled it yeah doubled it so uh yeah so i mean they have the gold edition coming out soon obviously they have the dlc coming out soon what i really um, like you didn't read it but this equates to 11.54 percent of all players that are playing i said that. uh you didn't say percentage i did oh you fell asleep 11.54 percent of all players that's that's a healthy chunk because yeah. i don't know how many units uh Resident Evil sold in general, but based on that math, I can assume if they three hundred thousand, they sold about three million units, roughly, mm. uh, give or take a hundred thousand in there. Um, math, yeah. You. <laughs> but that's but that's that's really cool because that's about what I expect from PSVR attach rate at this point because the unit when that was out, the unit wasn't a it was readily available because it, we were still in the somewhat shortage era. We were just coming out of that, which is weird to say now because they feel like they're fucking everywhere. And I think that uh, number's only going to rise too because if you think about it, like the people all these people that picked jumped them up. on board with Skyrim, like they're going to say, hey, what other game should I get? And yeah. literally the first game out of my mouth is going to be Resident Evil 7 and most other people because that is, in my opinion, closest in terms of, of experience level uh, or AAA level than Skyrim. Really, it's just like Farpoint, uh, Skyrim and Resident Evil 7 that are holding down the kind of AAA crowns for um, for PSVR. And then Doom when it comes out, hopefully. And Doom, yeah. Doom, I'm still not entirely certain. I want to see how big that game is. That's one thing that I'm yeah. kind of interested in. Okay, moving on to uh, Arizona Sunshine. We told you that they had a free update, and that update is live at time of you uh, listening or watching this podcast, but here you go. Uh, so it's going to be available to all PSVR players, and it is free. Uh, so it has not one, but two additional maps for its survival-style Endless Horde mode. Uh, each of the maps is bigger and allows for 
for a more dynamic playstyle than the Horde map you've been enjoying up until now. Both are playable solo and for up to four players in co-op multiplayer. Um, setting out to create more Horde mode maps, initially they wanted to uh, play with the element of darkness. That's why the campaign's Dark Old Mine was a natural fit for the first new map, only this time there are way, way more Freddies jumping at you from the dark pits and corners. Uh, Old Mine is built in such a way that it requires you to think tactically, promoting team play more than before in a larger play area compared to the first Horde map. It's wise to have some players stay on the lookout while others go on supply runs. We manipulated item and zombie spawning so that the most ammo and weapons spawn outside of the more comfortable areas, forcing you to take chances. A uh, unique twist on the Horde mode gameplay is the need of a flashlight, a much needed source of light in this map. The team starts out with only one though, so you will need to overcome some waves before you have enough for all players. Good thing you're not afraid of the dark. The second new map is called Undead Valley and is set in an entirely new location, an old zombie infested warehouse turned underground casino close to Las Vegas, Nevada. Yep, Freds have uh, jumped the border and we're not about to let that go unnoticed. In contrast to the old mine which encourages you to find a tactical position to fight upon, Undead Valley encourages exploration to an ever-expanding play area. Weapons, ammo, and tactical spots are much more scattered, forcing you to keep moving to stay ahead of the horde. You will need to unlock new areas both in and outdoors by blowing up obstacles with grenades or opening doors with keys found throughout the level, making this map feel somewhat like a mini-adventure. So there you go. You got uh, two awesome new updates or maps for the, the DLC there that were free and actually sound like they put a bit more thought into them than um, than previously considered. Uh, because they're they're not just saying, here's a new area. They're saying, here's a new area and several new mechanics to go with it. Yes, um, which is the way you should do an update. Cool. Yeah, and it's a free update. So good on especially the Arizona Sunshine. Especially guys. with that game that's that's been kind of up and down. It's been up and down. It's, there's been delays. There's been all kinds of stuff. But finally, um, you know, they are still paying attention to the game. We always love when a VR game gets DLC, regardless of how good it is or whether it's free. Um, so it's, uh, it's nice to see them still supporting the game and continuing to push to help it raise up and in, uh, in people's consciousness when it comes to thinking about good VR. That being said, you sent me the trailer for this, and this is a game... There's two games. It's two games, uh, Skull Pirates and War Theater, and both of these trailers were uh, set for PSX, right? Yes. Tell me about it. I don't know much about it other than that. <laughs> uh, I was, When I sent it to you, I was like, I don't, I'm trying to figure out how this is VR, because it, unless it does the um, the Lost Bear thing, because they're all they're 2D kind of... It looks like Bloody Zombies style. is yeah. probably going to be the way they go. So I'm interested to see how they how they handle that. But yeah, yeah it, it, it they, they look good, but I don't know where the VR comes in on it. And I'm going to wait to see... Yeah, it looks to is. me like uh, the main idea here is to take like a 2D, um, like f flat but kind of Z, what was it 2.5D we, we said earlier? Yeah. Uh, 2.5D style game, and it's probably going to play almost entirely like uh, Bloody Zombies. At least that's what I can tell by looking at it. I think that's the only option they do have. I don't think there's any way else they could play that game. Yeah, I didn't but, see. So it's just going to have like a depth of feel to it that makes it more fun and interesting, probably. But uh, check out the trailer, obviously. But does it uh, add to behind. it is the question. As I was um, and uh, that'll be available to see at PSX and potentially to play. We don't know for sure. There's been no news of that. Um, there's also a new trailer that went up for The Wretched. Um, the Wretched is a horror game that everyone's been keeping their eyes on for a long time. Um, that trailer will be behind me and, of course, in the description below. Uh, the Wretched has me excited. It's not necessarily like one of the more uh, hyped games coming out, but every time I've ever seen any kind of looking of it, it looks impressive, and uh, definitely you wouldn't touch this with a yard pole. Nope. But, um, but to me and to other horror fans out there, it looks like a lot of fun. I so. feel like we should challenge Tom, everybody. We're going to challenge Tom. Challenge me to There's going to be one week of news where we don't talk about horror game. Oh, uh, well. I'm going to see if it's possible. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I only, to be fair, I think I only... Well, no, I did talk about Resident Evil. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Also at PSX is going to be Gungrave VR. We talked about that before. If you're a fan of the original show, Gungrave, or the game, sorry, um, then, you know, that's going to be available fully uh, on the floor, I believe, uh, for them to play. So uh, that that makes a couple of announcements of people showing up uh, with new projects to Kind of wish I'd, I could go to PSX. Yeah, me too. But uh, One day. 
We haven't really heard or seen a lot about Gungrave yet. We just know that it is a popular title that's being uh, converted for PSVR. And so far, all the artwork and everything looks really cool for it. Um, I don't know if you can see uh, this this kind of like awesome title thing I have behind us, but it shows kind of this this guy that looks a little bit like Reaper, I suppose, from Overwatch. Um, mixed with the cowboy dude and uh, I was gonna say it has a, a red dead it was immediately what I thought yeah of. yeah or like red dead but it looks really cool and uh, it's yet to remain to be seen whether it is or not but it'll be at PSX which means that not so long from now we're gonna be able to see it in all of its glory uh, and then you realize PSX is the weekend after we do the live stream yeah so we're gonna be not knocked out from that and then we're Ooh, knocked out from all the be a busy news. week uh, so, uh, we're really good at planning these things out. We did E3 and Indie PopCon back to back a couple years ago. It is. So, two bits of good sales news this week. You touched on it at the beginning, but uh, you're absolutely right. It has been a pretty stellar, uh, you know, period of time for uh, PSVR. Now, this I don't think this is necessarily even including uh, the with Skyrim because this is Q3. Um, but basically, it says virtual reality headset shipments. On this are, is from C- Canalys, by the. Uh, virtual reality headset shipments are showing no signs of slowing as the quarterly total exceeded 1 million units for the first time in Q3 2017. Sony took the lead, shipping more than 490,000 uh, PlayStation VR sets. So they were Q3, about half of them. Followed by Oculus, which shipped 210. Uh, and then HTC Vive took third place, which is surprising, uh, at 160,000. Um, it says Sony, Oculus, and HTC made up 86% of the total market in Q3 2017. So, yeah, gigantic sales numbers for PSVR for Q3. And again, I don't know if that's even including the Skyrim boom, because when did Q3 end? I don't know. Yeah, I don't really know either. It doesn't say in here either, so I can't be too useful as far as that's concerned. But exciting news nonetheless. High numbers is good. Uh, and then as far as other news, back to the UK, and we've been saying for a couple of weeks now on the podcast that the UK seems to be pretty avid supporters of, uh, of VR. So this is really interesting news. In the UK right now, uh, the last, give me a second here, the last uh, sales week, when I assume when Skyrim was released, um, the sales uh, for PSVR were on par with launch week. So that means that the amount of units that they sold on launch week has been, you know, close to, if not the same as just this last week with Skyrim. So big news. I mean, that's crazy high numbers, right? Both uh, over here and in the UK. And that's kind of going back to what you said, where we're at this this kind of turning point where it's becoming less of a gimmick and more of a, like, a niche, I would say. It's gone from gimmick to niche. And then it will hopefully go from niche to like indie to mainstream at some point. But what do you think? I'm excited about this. I mean, it, it's time. Time will tell. Kind of, the, I'm at a weird spot with these numbers. Right. Reason being is it's exciting that people are buying the the unit. People are getting in it because I want support for it and all this kind of stuff. But the more and more people buy it, the more and more I'm like, fuck, Gen Two is like not that far away. Oh, we don't it. know that. I my my brain says if Sony if Sony's like oh this is super successful and they want to get then that next group of people but they make just a reiteration. did that incremental update but that's not a Gen unit. two no that's a that's a tweak but I'm saying like if they just tweaked this unit I don't think Gen two is anywhere near I think we're talking a couple of years even before we start like at least two years before we 2020. start twenty to twenty told you twenty nineteen PS five yeah. twenty twenty I'm fine with like I mean we when did we get the headset was it twenty fifteen was it twenty sixteen I forget when it even came out twenty sixteen right so if, so if I can get twenty sixteen to twenty twenty with a singular headset I'm fine with that four years of, of Cause, VR because the fidelity is going to be the next thing I think they're going to up in it like, yeah that's sure. going to be the next big jump because frame rate. Well, mm-hmm. even just even just visual fidelity, because even the Vive, like I've told you, when I play the the HTC Vive, I know I notice a visual difference right. between the two, and that's not a knock on PSVR because it's got to run on a PlayStation Four versus a thousand dollar PC. Well, the question is, but, do they start timing it alongside the launch of the PS Five, or do they at least have the PS Five in mind with the amount of power that's going to be? Able they'll to do. Out? I I my prediction is they'll have a year in between, so they'll announce PS Five twenty nineteen, PSVR two or whatever the hell they call it twenty twenty. Interesting. That's that's been my statement for the last like six months. We'll see if it happens. We're gonna see. But, but no, I, I think yeah. it's really cool to see this kind of stuff. Um, Black Friday, like I said, is in the U.S. at least has pushed a lot of units. Um, I'm interested to see now that people have it. I'm interested to see the staying power of people who bought it on Black Friday because that's more of your. 
I don't say your average consumer. That's more of the people that were not. They might have been excited or they might have been whatever before what it might have been interested, but for whatever reason, they didn't pick it up sooner, whether right. it's financial or whatever it may be. You're wondering if they're all going to be happy with their purchase. How many? Yeah, how many of them are going to play Skyrim and be done? How many of them are going to play Rec Room and be done? Or how many of them are going to be, hey, I wanna, I'm want i going to play a game at least one game a month or whatever. I'll pick up the VR every two months, whatever it may be. I think uh, if we're lucky, it'll go like it has done for most of us where you play that first one game that kind of blows your mind and then you get semi-addicted to it to the point where you start just looking at anything which looks like it could be half viable in VR for me anyway and, and picking it up. Um, I'm still now a little bit more cautious. I have hit that peak where I'm like, okay, I'm not going to buy everything that comes out, but I am definitely going to take a solid look or, or a deeper look at every VR game more so than I would like a traditional game coming out. Um, so I'm hoping anyway that a lot of these Skyrim players I mean I hope they build up to Skyrim to be honest because I'd hate for a bunch of people to just play it and then instantly feel sick because I, I could see that happening quite quickly um, we both uh, kind of eased our way into it by you know like experience to kind of shorter we, experience the, to the best place to start experience. as we tell everybody is PlayStation Worlds so. PlayStation Worlds is definitely the best place to get the the hang of it. Um, but when you get into like the realms of Skyrim where you're like literally um, fully movement, you have full control, you can go anywhere you want to, the play sessions can last for hours, that's when you start getting into like, okay, are people going to start regretting this because they're sick or are they going to love it so much that they will force themselves to build up their VR legs? Because that's almost like something that pe new gamers anyway don't get told is that, hey, you're going to feel sick for a minute, like, mm -hmm. you know. But again, we'll get to that on the uh, on the questions that's actually coming up. So, but yeah, excited to see the staying power and see how it goes, and we'll be there to report it every step of the way. That being said, it's time for our spotlight this week, and I'm shining the spotlight on Final Fantasy 15 Monsters of the Deep, um, which has a somewhat, let's say, rich history. Um, uh, we were talking about this before we went live, and you reminded me and showed me the um, the footage that was shown at the original E3 2016 E3 trailer. Play as Prompto. Are you playing as Prompto in this, Tom? I met Prompto. I've not played as so him. So you're not playing as Prompto, um, then. If you so met him, you're not him. If you watch the original original trailer for the, the VR experience, as they called it at the time for Final Fantasy, they were indicating that you were going to get to play as Prompto using a gun, which is his primary weapon. You're going to uh, fight, weapon. what is it, Deadeye or whatever is the thing from the Yeah, like one the of the beta. monsters, yeah. Um, but like you would be with your group of folks and like shooting and it's all done through VR. But there was also like other hints that you'd be able to do other things, like they show you riding in the car with Sydney at the end. and Staring at her um, boobs. Staring at her boobs. <laughs> So yeah, it's um, it's interesting that we've gone all the way from that promise to what we got eventually, which was Monsters of the Deep. Now, I will say this. I'm not particularly that mad about it because the VR experiences they showed to me look like a tacky add-on. It looked like something that might be fun to experience, but ultimately wasn't going to hold any weight behind it uh, because it was essentially a shooting gallery, right? You stand there, maybe you can teleport around a place, but you're just shooting a monster. Um, they didn't really allude to any more than that. Like, I would love for them to be able to translate the whole thing into VR, but of course that's not happening. So, um... So instead, to go the kind of direction that they did with a fishing game was weird, but also Japanese thought process, <laughs> you know, why not? It is weird. Um, but yeah, so, so what we got instead was this cool kind of monster fish hunting game, and I played it, and I played it for quite a while. I actually find myself really kind of digging it a, a lot more than I thought I was going to. Um, so... To give you a rough idea of kind of the story and everything, uh, as you start out, and yes, there is a story, by the way, for those of you that were wondering, as you start out, uh, you are a fisherman and you go to a fishing hole and you get your ass kicked by a giant fish. You then wake up um, and Sydney has uh, taken you back to your home and patched you up a little bit and uh, basically just sort of reminds you who you are and hands you a flyer that says, you know, there's this killer fish in this, in this lake, you got to go take it out. So you uh, drive your car, you don't actually physically drive it, you kind of get in it, and then it next scene it shows up at the lake or whatever, and then you do teleportation, use teleportation to get out of the car all the way down to the fishing area, to the boat or whatever it is you're fishing off of, and you uh, usually have someone there to converse with. So in every game that I played, I had someone there at that fishing hole that was fishing at the same time. The first person was Noctis, who is of course the, the star of Final Fantasy XV. Second was Random Fishing Dude, 
who I'm sure is in the game, but I don't know if I ever got far enough to meet him. Third one is Prompto. Um, so Prompto is in the game. He's just not shooting but you're anything. Not Prompto. Well, he's shooting you with a camera. So he's basically trying to find good pictures of you with your fishies. So here's the plot, right? Demon fish have taken over all of the uh, the water pools and stuff in uh, the area, and you have to kill the demon fish to free or clean or cleanse the pool and allow other fishermen to use it. That's the plot. Um, it's all right, though. Like, it's not too bad. Basically, as you fish, you catch various different sizes of fish. The fishing part itself was simplistic. It wasn't anywhere near the complication level or realism level that I was hoping for, but it's a Final Fantasy fishing game, so I wasn't sure really how deep I expected it to mega go. Mega bass fishing? It's definitely better than that. Yeah, I don't. I haven't played that fishing, the other fishing game that just came out for PSVR yet, so I don't know if it's better or worse than that, but I will say it's probably less realistic than Dream Angler was. Um as far as like how you fight the fish like the every fish is easy to catch like really easy to catch the casting takes a little bit of getting used to but you have a cool little radar so you can like just sort of like you you sort of literally reach onto your chest to pull off your radar or press a button and you can see the spots in the pool where there are fish and it'll give you like a hint at what size they are so you know where you want to cast off at so you know if you want to get a big one or for that. sure and there are basically you keep catching fish until you've built up enough weight that the boss comes out and the bosses are all different so they all have their thing that they do the first one is kind of a miserable son of a bitch he just um he jumps onto the side and then starts ever so slowly creeping towards you and you have to shoot him in the mouth and i learned this the hard way to, to stop him from progressing towards you uh, uh otherwise he'll take a bite out of you so whenever a boss comes out you actually drop your fishing rod and pick up a bow and arrow and you're like fighting the boss by shooting it like a gallery shooter until it's so weak that you can actually catch it with the rod afterwards so there's this kind of weird mixture of actual like gunplay elements but also um fishing elements as well the bosses were all cool and unique the experience is really nice the environments were lush it was pretty good it was not perfect graphically but it's definitely up there um, the 3D models are incredible. Um, Sydney made me again kind of feel a little bit uncomfortable uh, with her boobs, th- you know, in my face or her butt in my face or whatever she felt like doing. But uh, yeah, I mean, aside from that, it, it, the, the models are great. Noctis looks great. Prompto looks great. The rest of the gang look great. And um, alongside fishing for the giant monster fish, you can also do things like tournaments. You can do free fishing. You could buy extra rods and lures and clothing and all that kind of stuff. There is a creative character, so you actually do make a version of yourself in the Final Fantasy world, which was pretty fun. Um, And that's just kind of it. You just kind of like keep getting contracts to take out these monster fish but in the meantime you can do other things too like free fishing or tournaments or whatever you want to so solid amount of longevity to it uh really kind of interesting unique gameplay yeah that's you're watching the guy that was creeping on me yeah um, see what your boss looked uh, like, he, i haven't watched the gameplay yet yeah no you're totally fine uh, um so, i do yeah. have a question though sure control scheme yeah move uh, DualShock. so moves is the control scheme to actually physically move in game it's all teleportation so it's just a one button trigger to go wherever you want to Uh, anything you're selecting one button trigger to go onto it you do have a sub menu and stuff you can use with the other uh, face button on the move as far as actual like fishing movements uh, you basically you use the rod in uh, I used it in my right hand I don't know if you can switch it to left hand Uh, you hold down the top button on the move as you bring back the rod the flick of your wrist and all that stuff is taken into account as you let go or the timing is is taken into account so it's semi-realistic in that sense and then you use your other move to kind of grip onto the the reel reel. and start pulling it in um and then as the fish are coming in like they'll occasionally dart one direction or another and you have to basically like swing whichever direction they're going and lean into them if you will until they're close enough to scoop up but um i've noticed with this that it's not so you again i'm watching i'm literally watching the footage as you're talking about it so i have an idea of what's going on with the boss fight, though, it's not a one and done or a three and done. It's a you shoot him, he comes back, regen the cells, shoot yeah, him, they, comes back. Yeah, depending re- oh, on the boss, they some of them have different levels of bar. Like, they'll heal themselves after a little while, and you have to take them back down again. Uh, there was one boss that was really annoying that was, like, multiple fish. So he would jump up, and then, like, eight copies of him would jump up, and you could only tell which one he was because he had a red eye. So you had to find the red eye really fast and shoot him before everything shot you. Um, really cool. Like, it's it's unique gameplay. It's not terrible by any means. It's probably the best fishing game out there right now, I would say, on pure 
enjoyment um, because it is very jokey and very kind of, you know, especially if you love the Final Fantasy world, you are in that world and you do feel like when you walk up to a fishing hole, you'll see a chocobo by the side of you and you're like, oh, wow, that's a real, you know, life-size chocobo. Um, so there, I had a, a lot of enjoyment out of this game. It's definitely not perfect. Like, it's rough around the edges. There's a lot of, um, you know, slightly janky controls here and there. Like, the actual, like, skipping uh, from part to part is almost always done with, like, a screen that you view so you know how to that. break immersion and yeah. do that there's a lot of that and that's kind of that's frustrating like they just they don't fully vr everything um there's a lot of story elements that are purely told through um you kind of staring at a screen which is kind of annoying um but what there what there is there is solid and it's actually probably way better than i could have imagined any uh of the actual original vr experience to have ended up as you know what you know we make this in my opinion, a little bit better. And, and as somebody, as as we said, or as you said earlier, I have an issue with them showing what they showed us for E3 2016, and then we get this. If they, if you could have caught the fish, because the things and the things that you do in Final Fantasy that are kind of like side missions, you have right, you're you're on chocobos, you have fish, you cook. Imagine catching fish riding a chocobo to a kitchen and cooking up whatever meal it was. Yeah, just like, like adding more elements to it. That's what I'm saying, it. like, like yeah. giving it some sort of progression or something. That would and maybe, be cool. And maybe then if the... Well, this might be going too far, but then you could cook in VR and the things you cooked in VR showed up in your non-VR game. Well, there's there's a lot of... Uh, like that's, you, that's a bit much, but I would love to... Hang out at like a camp and stuff yeah. like you do in the main game and like you'll have Noctis there with you and you can look at him and talk to him and stuff. And um, So there is a lot of kind of small little nuggets of feeling like you're just genuinely in the world. But for the most part, you're either at home or in front of a, a, a lake. Yeah. Um, but it's still enjoyable. Like it's still it's like for the price point as well because it's on a lower price tier. It's like thirty bucks, I think, maybe twenty. Yeah, it's thirty. That's thirty. Um, I think it's worth it. I think for that price point, they did a good job. I think they did a good enough job. I think honestly, truly, with all my heart, that this is better than whatever they would have tried to have done with Prompto. And um, I was surprised at how much I enjoyed it. I did not. I went in there knowing as a huge Final Fantasy fan that I was probably going to be disappointed and I actually came out smiling and thinking that was a lot of fun and I would go totally back into that game and play more of it so um, I have high praise for Monsters of the Deep uh, I think the price point is exact I think you can easily ignore ignore some of the shortcomings of it for the sake of the experience that you do eventually get and the story so that's my, my thoughts on that and of course review to follow so stay cool. tuned for that and finally since there are so many of you that uh, decided that you wanted to go ahead and pick up a PSVR unit recently and you played Skyrim or you played whatever, Rec Room, um, we thought uh, it would be about time for us to uh, sort of reintroduce the concept of PSVR to people and give you kind of a, well, my question rather, is to give you some kind of an idea of where to start. Like what things do you absolutely need to know when you first pick up a PSVR? Because there's a lot of things that go unnoticed um, or that, you know, you wish someone would have told you at the beginning. So we're going to make the conscious effort to combine our brains right now and help you with that. Um, so the official question, as I wrote it out, because my phone's gone dead, is, so you're new to VR. Um, Jesus Christ, I hate this phone. So what do you need to know? What do you need to know? <laughs> uh, and uh, Sorry. Professionalism. So you're new to VR. What do you need to know? So you're new to VR. What do they need to know? First thing I would tell them is uh, read packages. Read packages? Read packages. Why is because that? you will see multiple things on a package. That includes PSVR compatible, PSVR game, move compatible, Moves required. Mm. Know what you're getting. Solid point. So don't buy, like, there's games, like Rec Room is an example of, I don't believe that works with DualShock right now. I think it's only moves. So right. if you don't have moves, you can't play that game. Granted, that one's free, but if you paid for a game, it that's... suck more. Yeah, that's yeah. moves only. Like uh, Job Simulator, you have to have moves. If you don't have it, it doesn't work. So read packaging. Second thing is make sure... You clear your space enough. It tells you the beginning, and at this point, I was like, yeah, whatever. Like, I'm fine. But make sure you are aware of how far you are, and don't be afraid to pop the headset off to reorient yourself. So during the live stream of Rec Room, a lot of times, I kept saying, hey, let me make sure which... Let me see which way I'm facing. Because there'd be times where I thought I was in one spot in my brain, like physically in the room, but I was in another spot facing a different direction. And right. obviously, check the cord, make sure you're not tangled up in it, that kind of thing. Um, 
those would be the like the two like non gaming things I would say like check the packaging and then make sure your room is set up that you won't punch a wall a human a light whatever <laughs> a it may be yeah punch anything well there's I've a punch many things there's an important life. side note to your first point there which is the the fact that there are kind of different listings of VR games because there are some that are just pure VR game titles which means that you know you absolutely have to have the headset to play there's no yeah. other way to play it PSVR there compatible. are PSVR compatible ones which are usually other games that have a VR element in them such as Tomb Raider Battle, uh, has ba- a VR the first element. Battlefront um, yeah the, the Battlefront had the X-Wing VR mission which again brilliant thing but not necessarily worth the $60 game for if you that's all that's included at the beginning um, and there are many games like that that can either, uh, ha- they either have a small element or they can be played both ways like Resident Evil for example and then there's the experiences too because experiences are entirely different to the games and a lot of people don't get that so um, Illuminate is always a really good one. Like if you if you haven't had chance yet and you just got your headset, Illuminate is free, mm-hmm. and Illuminate is basically like a very small kind of almost like Nightmare Before Christmas style art mm-hmm. um, story. It's a it's a movie that you watch in full three dimensions. It's incredible. It's based off um, a story I think called The Matchstick or Matchbook or something. Yeah, it looks like, like Caroline kind of, and it's and it's kind not of not quite as creepy, but not, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, but it's just it's, it's that art style. Yeah, you're literally watching this kind of crazy, beautiful thing and unfold in front of you. And that and, was the first one I think I walked around doing because I was like, let me look at this. Yeah, type thing. And there was you know, there was a couple others as well, and they, they have like stuff uh, like Invasion the, is a good one. Invasion, the Chain Smokers uh, video is on I'm there. Not done There's that a couple other smo- uh, like smokers. There's a couple other um, like music videos I mean, that Sony put up. Let's as be well. honest. The other the other thing too that people don't even think about is YouTube supports 360, Hulu mm-hmm. supports 360. Um, you have 3D movies in the PSVR headset, like stuff yeah, like Blu-ray that. Movies, that people don't, if you didn't think about. know, if you're new, uh, you can put a 3D Blu-ray movie into your PlayStation, and now you can watch it's the, the best whole thing in 3D it. without glasses. You just watch it through the PSVR headset. So you may have missed that uh, coming into the fold. The other the other thing I would say too is the pick up moves because you're going to want them. And then from there, determine which way works best for you. Because I tend to be... I feel like you are more a dual shot guy if you have the opportunity. I'm more yeah. of like, let me use the moves because it's my hands. But I also... We play different styles of games where I'm playing the stupid social games where I'm playing like Job Simulator where I'm going to pick stuff up and chuck it. Like That to me is more realist, realistic, obviously, than I... Again, getting back to my other point, be aware of your surroundings. I I literally have punched a wall. I have been punched in Job Simulator as well by my sister. Uh <laughs> Because she went to go chuck something, and I went to go adjust the headset to tighten it for her, and she just went, bam! Did not feel good. Um, but get the, get the moves. You're going to want them. We, we always, if, you, if you're new, we talk about moves 2.0. You talk about it all the time. It needs, I agree it needs to come, but they're not here yet. They do have Don't a wait newer for them. version of the moves, which uh, charge off the same uh, cable as your, your DS4 But it's, does. it's the same technology. There's but no it's new buttons. the same technology. Um, I will also add this. Set your fucking IPD. Set the, is it IPD? Is that the right one? The I distance one? I don't know. I did that though. Either way, set the I distance thing. So in the settings directly on your PlayStation, there is an area that you can go to to set your pupil space apart um, so that it knows how to give you the best clarity in VR. This is absolutely crucial to do before you start playing because so many people will put that headset on and complain of it being blurry and it's simply because they haven't set that distance. So it's almost like uh, putting on the wrong pair of glasses, right? It just, everything mm-hmm. looks weird and blurry. So what you do is you sit down in front of your in front of your camera. And just um, look at it. Go, yeah, go into those settings and then as you look at it, it gives you like a, like a picture. It takes a picture of your face and then you physically adjust the cross points to where your pupils are in your eye that will recalibrate the psvr headset for perfect clarity for you um and it's it's one of the easiest things to not even know exists let alone to you know forget to do and speaking so, speaking of glasses wear your glasses in vr yeah totally period fine. wear your glasses in vr as somebody who has done it both ways i am blind as a bat without my glasses and things are blurry things are super blurry when you're uh when you're you got your glasses off. So it is made designed to have glasses in mind. I know some of the other headsets are a bit trickier. Sony is as well aware that that is a thing people have. So that's been a, a comment available. that's come up recently, actually, from Vive users, users and stuff that picked it up for Skyrim said that it's the most comfortable headset you and PSVR. works the best with glasses. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which I thought was good. Yeah. Um, 
I would I would also say the big the, the best purchase I've made so far outside of outside of like games and all that is a charging stand yeah. that has and it's a it, I mean you don't charge the P, the PSVR but it has a stand I can put my PSVR on it has two chargers for the move and then it's got a charger for the DualShock because you will run out of USB ports especially if you don't have a Pro the Pro has three yeah the regular PS4 which is what I got has two well if your PSVR is plugged in to one now you're down to one you theoretically are charging a controller and or what well, other I run my Pro with a, a four terabyte external hard drive and that's the camera saying. continually that's, plugged that's in. What well, the camera's not so, USB though. I think it is. I mm-hmm. think it, something connects to USB that's blocking my port. But um, I only have one free port on mine, so I basically, if I have to, if I know I have a move game coming up, I have to charge the moves independently, uh, one at a time, and, and it, it's a pain in the ass. So I would say that's one of the purchases I wish I made. Yeah, Amazon has like a. Day. I think mine was. I got it for Christmas last year maybe my birthday it was 40 bucks it's uh, totally honestly the best and for two reasons one not just for charging purposes but also you said you keep yours in a box yeah i I store mine there and it's really easy all i have to do is just go boop 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 put it on um so yeah the the other thing i think you have more experience than i do because i don't have pets but when you're playing games Beware that you may have pets around you as well. Again, it's being aware of your surroundings, but they don't know what's going on. No, they're I unaware. Think they think something real weird's going yeah. on, and they will want to find out uh, yes. what it is. So there's plenty of times I've been attacked by my dogs in the middle of VR, and that can give you a heart attack. So I would recommend against so, that. So let's go into let's talk a little bit about accessories or okay. things like that. So we I talked gonna, about. I was going to mention one more thing. Okay. And now I've completely forgotten what it was. No. Uh, uh, it wasn't a song. Okay. I don't know what it was. Yeah. Continue. You all remember it. So we talked about having a. I talked about having a charging stand. Uh, in my opinion, it is completely necessary. It's a wall. It's a wall plug. You're done with it. And so on and so forth. Other accessories that are out and whether you want or not is up to you. But like I said, moves. I pretty much recommend them. Uh, the aim I recommend if you play first person shooters. Um, that being said, because you won't, there's I think six or seven games that are compatible with it right now. If you don't have those games, there's no point in picking it up. But I mean, it's. The best example. If you're going to get Farpoint, you, you have you, Farpoint. Yeah, you want the game. Don't play it without a, without yeah. an aim, or you will not get the experience that everyone yes. else is talking about. Yes. Um, what other accessories are there? There's different versions of the camera, but now that's that's changed. There's like carry cases and things like yeah. that. Uh, there's a lot of people that mount their camera as well, so you can maybe look at getting some mounting stuff. Um, the camera is usually better higher because it has a better field of vision, especially if you li- live in a grotty basement like we do. Um, but like right I don't now, live in your basement. my camera is uh, just sat on top of the of the unit, on top of the processor unit, actually. It's mine's on top of my TV. Um, yeah, and, and I've noticed, especially for Farpoint, that it controls far better, and you get less of the weird, like, bugged out move controllers if you have it higher. So a lot of people will mount it up on the ceiling or, or close to the ceiling and have it facing down uh, or have it uh, sat on top of your TV. It is very highly manipulatable. Mm-hmm. Um, the little stand thing that it comes on is kind of great, and also you can remove it from the stand entirely and just kind of, like, put it wherever you want to um so that's one um the other thing i was going to mention is not an accessory but um it's something i think is important to know is the vr leg situation because we were talking earlier about people that buy skyrim off the bat and then like skyrim is like it's a pretty it can be motion sick heavy if you're not used to it um oh no i think it is from the from most of the reviews i've read if v- skyrim is one of the ones you're going to get motion sick in if you don't play a lot of vr right so kind of, even if you teleport. So if you're not uh, an avid VR player already, if you just picked it up for Skyrim, be aware that you might hit nausea at certain points, and that's okay, and don't let it put you off. You may also feel like you have an uncomfortable night's sleep or two for the first couple nights after playing it. I know that I did. Um, but the the way to kind of ease yourself in is to start with the experiences so we always start every new person with ocean descent uh with or without the shark just because it's the perfect way to explain what vr is without making you do anything you just have to stand there and just kind of like soak in the scenery and then your your brain's like okay this is interesting this is a new thing um then start with sitting down games start with something like until dawn rush of blood or the london heist or something that you don't have to stand with uh Um, tumble vr is a good one too yeah tumble's good uh just because then you're kind of like comfortable you're sat down you're not necessarily getting inertia unless you're playing uh rush of blood in which case the the roller coaster might give you a little bit of a stomach drop but it's it's fun it's not like a bad inertia um 
do all of that continuously in longer and longer play sessions until you even look at a game like Resident Evil 7. Because those games are... There's, there's a thing that happens, and we've talked about it before, but if you're sat down playing, you get what they call the magic carpet effect, which is where your character appears to be floating down a hallway um, to whatever end you're, you're trying to get to. Well, you know, your brain knows that you're, you're sat sitting. still. So there's this weird kind of like floaty feeling you get, which can make you nauseous. Um, one thing that Keegan does to help out sometimes is he will stand up in those games. I, I'm, a, and, I'm a VR stander. And walk along with the character in some instances, kind of like on like four march point on the i spot. marched um and that helped him combat his nausea because it just it felt like his brain was actually moving you know making sense of it a, a little easier so don't forget your brain's going to struggle with this um i think eventually everyone can reach the point where they they're pretty comfortable to just sit down and play skyrim or whatever it is i know that i'm at that point now so i assume that it's not because i have some kind of superhuman tolerance it's just because i feel I play like you do you do have a higher tolerance than i think most people I mean, I'm also the guy that loves watching fine footage movies, though, and there's some yeah. people that, like, hate those because of how sh- they don't like the shaky cam, and I'm like, I can deal with that just fine. So maybe it is an inbuilt, inherent thing. I don't know. But um, I would say don't give up. Definitely work towards it. And even if your play sessions only last 20 minutes at a time, just keep, you know, keep playing, man, because it's still you still get that juice. You still get that experience, even if you only take it in 20 minutes at a time as opposed to like two hours at a time like like I do. And the other, the other thing I want to talk about when it comes to VR, when you first put the headset on, on any experience, turn around. Mm. Like, literally just do a 360. Um, well, maybe Look 180 and come back. Yeah. Um, just to see what's around you because the, the beauty of VR is it is a 360 degree enclosure essentially that's that's around you and it's because if you look straight ahead it's it's yes it's like a tv screen kind of but it's not really because it, it extends out it's got a wider field of view but if you just look straight ahead the whole time you're only getting that experience if you look behind you there's a lot of times in like games like in, i know when i played batman the first few times like i was looking at everything and i remember uh when sarah came over and played it she was hunting for the joker things and like that makes you look around to find stuff and you see these little details that you would have missed otherwise that's like oh that's cool. And don't for, don't be afraid to click on, like, move stuff. Click on stuff. A lot of games for VR have interactivity, because it's virtual reality, to do things. Like in the in Batman, as, an, uh, as the example, you can move the bat signal around. Um, in Job Simulator, you can do pretty much anything you want to do with and high things around smoke it. smoke a cigar. Yeah, like, yeah. don't be afraid throw to... Throw stuff out the door. <laughs> yeah, don't be afraid to do stupid shit yeah. in VR. You already look dumb enough with the headset on, so might as well just go full dumb. <laughs> go full dumb. Go full dumb. Never go full dumb. But, like, I don't know. I, I, I enjoy it, too. A lot of people take gaming, in my opinion, super seriously. And VR, yes, VR is a serious medium, and you should. Like, when you're playing Resident Evil 7, you're playing Skyrim or whatever it may be. Like, you should get into the game, but also don't forget at times it's a video game, yeah. and it is a, it is a fun medium. Like, Skyrim, one of my favorite one or one of your favorite things to do is to jump off stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, don't forget to do shit like that. Like, that's not part of the game, but it's fun to do. Or, like I said, for it me, gives job me a butterfly feeling in my belly. Exactly. I like it. For me, for Job Simulator, I always the, her name's Karen. I don't know if that's actually her name, but in the Job Simulator office, I always grab stuff and chuck it at the robot because <laughs> I can and they react to it. Like, yeah. you'll see these little things that happen in VR that you wouldn't be able to do outside of it. And it's so much fun. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the thing is enjoy your time in it because this is a cool piece of technology that exists that wasn't really here a few years ago. Even the... outside of the virtual world, like there are many other benefits to owning the headset as well. Alongside the, like we said, the Blu-ray The cool factor. Thing, you have the ability to do display mode where you can play Assassin's Creed or World, of, uh, World War II or uh, Scythe Park. With a gigantic screen strapped to your face. Is yeah, the so it feels like you're in an IMAX theater, but you're actually just like laying down on your couch. So, um, you know, for especially for like students and people that do not have necessarily the largest play space, this is the best, biggest TV you're ever going to get alongside, um, you know, all the other abilities that it has uh, at hand. Don't forget that. Don't ignore that. That's a feature you're allowed to utilize and enjoy. Um, so do it. Like, I really want to try playing Call of Duty. And uh, I got sick playing Division because it's too quick. Yeah. I haven't uh, tried a game yet. I've watched the movies, yeah. but I haven't tried a game. But it's it's there, and I really want to try it because I think it'd be cool. I think there's certain games as well, certain first-person games that would definitely be given, like, uh, an extra bit of juice. I used to play Halo on a 110-inch screen. Like amnesia or something basement. like that. Friends basement. The last thing I'm going to say on this is don't expect the same image quality you get 
on normal games. Correct. Um, they they look fine. There there is what's called a screen door effect. I call it. It's a little like a, it's like a checkered rainbow sometimes, uh, depending on how the camera and adjust the camera to make sure or adjust the headset to make sure it's comfortable. It should feel. It actually sits really low on the back of your head. It feels weird at first, but then it just comes second nature when you put it on. You're like, oh, that's where it's supposed to go. So don't be afraid to just adjust the settings on the headset to get it as clear as you can, but it will not be 4k it will not be t- it, it is in 1080 but it will not view in 1080 because it's 1080p for two eyes for like the vive and oculus they're 1080 for each eye yeah so it's a way it's a sharper image but there does it a lot of times it doesn't take away from the game yeah um so some of them still look pretty fucking good yes. it's just that they don't expect to go from an experience like assassin's creed origins like, where i'm taking on, pictures on all the time tv to to expecting vr to be like actual like photorealism it's not yeah the screen door is is kind of the weirdest thing to begin with because you're wondering why everything has this weird haze on it but that's just part and parcel of the experience and the good part is that the games that have the most immersion level will make you feel like that door doesn't exist yes. so th- that's kind of uh, like skyrim i don't see that at all i don't see it during resident evil i didn't either yeah you know it's and it's it's not that it's not there it's just that your brain is so in tuned with what you're seeing that it actually kind of focuses it out almost uh which is a really neat thing i only ever see it like during a completely pitch black screen and i'm yep. like oh yeah there's that like the, the white yeah lights or whatever kind of it is yeah. It. um but yeah don't don't expect it to be yeah. to be 4k image quality but that also that being said, it's not bad looking. Yeah, uh, it's not bad looking, and the it's not bad looking. Level two gamers more than makes up for the for the graphical fidelity. Yes. Um, so I mean, those I guess are our top tips for when you first get your headset. So definitely look into things like getting an, a Nikon camera cl- uh, cleaning lens, um, which I don't think I mentioned. That was the thing I forgot. Uh, Nikon camera lens is perfect. Or or VR. microfiber just to clean microfibers it. are good. They get grubby real quick though. But the camera cleaner you can get it for like seven bucks. It's the same thing that professional photographers use to clean their lens, but you just use it for your PSVR. I've had one since the launch, and I've never had to use anything else. It's been perfect every time. Uh, why you can remove as well the rubber flap and clean that professionally if you want to. One more thing. Sure. Make sure you take the plastic off before you play the yeah, first time. Yeah, plastic on the eyeballs. Yes. Take that off. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's kind of that, that's kind of your rundown of like early things to do uh, before you start getting too crazy into your PSVR world. However, we would love to thank you uh, for for purchasing PSVR and of course joining the uh, the VR family. Because... And, if, and if you had VR for a little while, what's something you'd add to that list? What's something that somebody new for should sure. know? Yeah, that's what I want to see in our comments this week. You guys have been so good with comments lately. Let's keep that trend up. Uh, go ahead and post in the comments one thing that you would recommend or something you agree with from our list uh, that a new uh, PSVR user uh, needs to know but also if you just got your headset and for some reason you're watching our show thank you for joining and what questions do you have about it I'd like to think at this point uh, if we're not experts then at very least we know uh, a Somebody. couple hundred other people that are <laughs> so um, that being said uh, that's your code name Morpheus for this week thank you so much for joining us thank you so much for watching and as always welcome, welcome to, the to the second, second level. level bye it ain't no game but they say welcome to the second level